us and helps us grow. Alameen, it is actually a plural form of alam. And if the root word is, the root letters are alif, ayn, lam, and meen. And, it, and the plural, as I said, is alameen. And the singular is alam, which occurs in the Quran 73 times. The word alameen. Alam also, it, it, it repeated in the Holy Quran. We will come to that in its place, inshallah. So imagine the alam, the different worlds. You know, there's not just one word, that the one word which we know of, there are many other words, other other words which Allah has proved to us in the Quran. Worlds. He didn't say alam, he said alami, the billions of people, the insects and the other galaxies which are there in uh, the different universe. We'll go through the message from this, uh, this ayah before we practice. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen it means to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart. And we say to him, Jalla wa ala, Oh Allah, you are the greatest, you are the best creator, you are the most caring and kind. This is what we're actually saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaking to him, as you know, in the salat. Also, the second meaning of hamd is to thank him. And thank him for what? For all his blessings. He gave you the safety, he gave us the safety, he gave us the food that we are eating and what we eat. He gave us a chance to read the Salat al-Maghrib in Jama'ah. This is also a thanks given to him, Jalla wa'ala. He has given us a, a, an opportunity to make dua to him uh, after the Salat, even during the Salat as well. Imagine and, and feel Allah's greatness in your heart. Uh, he is our Rabb. He takes care of all of his billions of other creatures and he makes arrangements for their system. Very, he is somebody great. There's no one like him. There's nothing like unto him. Jalla wa'ala, and one of the habits we should have in our hearts is we should seek intensive knowledge and ponder upon the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, study science, and that science should lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, study mathematics, mathematics, history, and we will learn from the previous nations what happened to them when they transgressed and when they went against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should also, you know, wake us up. And also remember and realize that how great is him, is he, Jalla wa'ala. He created us, not just that, he left us, he didn't leave us alone, he sustained us, and he's sustaining us, and he's sustaining the whole universe. This way, when you re realize this in your, in your mind, you will praise him, and verily you will thank him from the depth of your heart. Last thing, evaluate, evaluate yourself, you know, check how many times, did I get influenced by something in this dunya, in this world? And I forgot. I did not say Alhamdulillah. How many times that he has blessed us with some good news or something and we do not say all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also the last habit which we should always do, thank him at all times. Whatever situation, whether he has given you good or bad, always thank him. You might think that sounds a bit, you know, organized, but when, he, if, when he's given you good, thank him. When he, has, when, he, when he tests you, also be thankful and ask him to help you in that test, in that trial. You know, whether you are eating, drinking, traveling, sleeping, whatever you are doing, going to work, etc. Thank him at all times. Because we are told in the Hadith Qudsi that when the, when the servant thanks me when, when he is in, in a good situation, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also remembers him when he is testing him in a trial or a difficult situation. Alim. So practice this uh, ayah. I'll give you two minutes to practice and then we move on to the next uh, uh, ayah. Bismillah. So, so as I said, split it to two groups of two. Uh, just practice Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen with meaning and also try to imagine those points which I mentioned earlier. You know, evaluate the last bit. <laughs> Yes, uh, you okay? So you can you can feel you can practice your share. You okay? No, that they come later on in the uh, no, so we do that we do the double in the initial. Can you put up some drink in the kitchen? You can initial. Huh? I'm <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, class. Did anyone get a chance to uh, practice? Yeah, brothers, did you manage to practice? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, okay. So we move on to the uh, second ayah, which is work made of two great, one of the two great names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. These two uh, w words, uh, like I mentioned before, in Bismillah ar-Rahman, we end from the, the, uh, the explanation that Rahma means to take care of someone. Everyone okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, Rahma means to take care of everyone, of someone with extreme continuity uh, for their love and their needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuously showering His mercy upon us. Uh, look, let's, let's look at an example. Uh, the author has given an example here. Allah is, is making the earth to rotate around the sun at the speed of how much? Six, 20 kilometers per second. Can anybody imagine that? 20 kilometers per second. So for the last 10 seconds, how many kilometers has this earth uh, moved? 200 kilometers, just in 10 seconds. So that is the speed that the earth is rotating around the sun. Do we feel any movement? No. no. Alhamdulillah, it's smooth. The, the, the earth is still the same as how it was this morning, unless there's a small jolt, an earthquake, etc. Then we feel it. Allah is controlling everything. Otherwise, earthquakes would have turned this earth into dust and debris, as, as will be the case uh, towards the end of uh, time, towards Judgment Day. One of the habits that we should have is the Prophet also mentions in a hadith uh, that he who does not by the way, when the hadith says he, it all refers to she as well. Yeah, so don't forget that. Yeah? This is how the, the Arabic language is composed. He or she who does not show mercy to others will not be shown mercy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is narrated Bukhari. This day and time, this day, this time, or after this salat, in which you heard this, read this verse, be merciful to others, take care of them. So read Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and the same thing, try to encompass this character in your own life as well. This is habit number six. So habit is something which we'll go into of the seven Islamic daily habits which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, through Surah Al-Fatiha has taught us uh, to do. So that is the end of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. We move on to the next slide which is the Malik Yawm al-Din. So we move on to Malik Yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين which will be three a the names of الرحمن الرحيم were explained previously in بسم الله الرحمن so go back to the slides of one a where we where we mention بسم الله we move on to again so the فاتحة verse four to five and let me just remind you at this point now don't forget the, the basic small homework which we give you, that is two tilawat, five minutes each. Yeah, Go over what you have learned, teach it to others, study the vocabulary book and the vocabulary sheet, listen to an mp3 recording of your favorite, favorite qari, ask your partner to listen to you. On the, on the surah which you learn, 
recite them in the salah. As we did the dua, we mentioned the dua in the beginning. Rabbi zidna ilma. Allah help us to learn the Quran in this Quran class. And the vocabulary booklets you have in front of you, uh, try to keep them close to you. We move on to verse number four. Repeat after me. Malik. 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 Master. Master. Yom. 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 Of the day. Of the day. Ad Deen of Judgment. Malik Yawmid Deen, Master of the Day of Judgment. Okay, Malik, the first word in this verse, it, it comes from the root letters Meem La Kaf. So similar to, you see, uh, Malik, but it has a different meaning. Malik, it occurs in the Quran how many times? Three times. And he means master, the owner, the one who belongs to, uh, who everything belongs to. Malak is different. Malak is the angel. Mm. So Malik is master, Malak is angel. So see how by just moving uh, a fatha kasra, you change the meaning of the Arabic language. Malak is plural, is malaika. Malaika, you hear this many times in the Quran. Malaika, and it will come later on uh, in the Surah. Uh, Al Qadr. Malak and Malaika. Then we want to Yom Ad Deen. Yom it means the day. Mm. Ayam is a plural, and this occurs in the Quran how many times? Mm. 405 mm. times. Ayam is days. You know, the plural of Yom. Ad Deen. Mm. You probably heard the, the, the word Ad Deen as in Islam. Yeah. Ad Deen al Islam. But here the deen means the day of judgment, the day of results for our good, inshallah, deeds, not our bad deeds, inshallah, we hope it will be good deeds in the future. And also the, the, the ad-deen, the other meaning for ad-deen also is the system of life, i.e. the Islam. Yeah? <coughs> Both meanings uh, depending on uh, where this word occurs in the Quran. We'll practice, but let me just take some messages from this uh, ayah. That on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the sole authority. He will be the Malik. Nobody shall have any power. He alone will judge amongst the people, without doubt. You know, he will be the Malik on the day of judgment. On that day, no one can intercede except the one who is given the permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know there are many categories of those who can intercede. But one of them is also... Uh, the child who has passed away before the age of Bulugha, uh, especially a small, you know, little baby, etc., he will uh, be a, a Shafi'ah or, or, or shafia on the Day of Judgment. You know, this will be a great honor given to the parents uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the Prophet ﷺ will also intercede uh, after giving permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the Day of Judgment, it will be a terrible day. The man will run away from his brother, uh, his mother, his father, his wife, his children, his sons, everyone will be worried about himself or herself. It will be a terrifying uh, day on the Day of Judgment. <coughs> so when we read this ayah, we should anticipate Allah's mercy on that day, that He will reward us for our good deeds, and simultaneously the same way we should always fear His punishment if we were to wrong ourselves. Yeah. So this is a both. So first he gives us the good news, but also he warns us to stay to this good habit and these good deeds which he has made as Muslims without our asking. You know, most of us have been born Muslim, alhamdulillah, uh, out of his mercy. This also is mercy. Now that we are asking him for Jannah, uh, we hope and we pray that he will grant us our dua, inshallah. One of the other habits from the Surah Al-Fatiha is that we should plan for every day keeping Akhirah in front of you. Yes, so plan for every day, have it in your mind that Akhirah is going to happen. You know, it is ine inevitable. Remember the death, the moat, the grave, uh, the resurrection, and the day of judgment. Yeah, pray Salah on your time, keep your, you know, keep to your time as much as you can be, you know, be, be, be really strict on your time, especially the Salah. And don't miss the, the, the tilawa, the, the fatiha, the, the adhkar, after the salat. Keep healthy and make sure to not use your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your hands and feet in the wrong doing. Yeah? 
because this is something you'll be asked about and use your life, especially your youth, your money and the knowledge in the right way because this is a trust which he has given us to all of us. Now we'll practice. So practice this ayah and keep in your mind the habits which we talked about early. Bismillah. Alim. <laughs> You could practice with the Yes, class. So on the note of Malik, you will hear some reciters say Malik, not Malik, Malik, which is fine, it means the same thing, Malik Yomidin. Malik Yomidin and Malik are also the same meaning, just different citation, but it won't be Malik. Malik means uh, the angel. Isn't it so Malik means king? Yeah, it's the same thing, Malik, yeah, king, the owner, yeah, so it has a similar meaning to king, kingship, Malik. Malik is obviously, the, the translation is angel. We move on to second to last uh, ayah, ayah number five, and this is a dua. We, we, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iyaka, uh, so if you repeat after me, Iyaka, you alone. <laughs> and this is repeated in the Quran 24 times. Iyaka. Iyaka. So the translation here uh, it is because the kaf is before the verb and it gives emphasis that Iyaka, you alone, we na'abudu, na'abudu, we worship. And ibadah is, as you know, worship and it comes from the root letters ayn, ba, and dal. Ibada, na'budu, ibada, worship. And abid is the one who is the worshipper, or abida, or female. Ma'bud is the one who is worshipped, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we have the second part of this uh, uh, verse, which is a dua. Wa, wa means and. Wa iyaka. Wa iyaka. And you alone. Okay, and you are so similar to the first uh, uh, word, iyaka, is repeated here for emphasis. Na'budu and nasta'in, they have the same beginning. So they have the noon in the beginning. And this refers to we or us. Na'budu, we worship. Nasta'in, this is repeated in the Quran once. Yeah? And it comes from the root letters, ayn, waw, and noon. And it means that we ask help from you. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask help. We ask for help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us just take some lessons that we will practice. Uh, that Allah has created us so that we worship Him. Jalla wa ala. He said in the, in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinns and the humans except that they worship me. Ibadah means not only to worship but also to obey Allah's order. So there's worship. And that is obeying Allah's commands to refrain from what He has told us to refrain from, to offer the salat, not to disobey Him, to, to, to perform the fasting, the siyam, to give zakat, to go for hajj, and to invite others towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam, to seek knowledge and halal earnings, to serve others. All these are acts of ibadah. So don't restrict ibadah just to prayer. To helping others is also ibadah. Yeah, it is said that, you know, serving your family in a halal way is also a ibadah. But amongst all these, the salat is the most important ibadah. So keep that in your mind. That yes, everything else could be ibadah and is ibadah, but the most important ibadah is the salat. Whosoever, whoever leaves a, uh, salat, yeah, intentionally he co commits kufr. 
and he really he demolishes an important pillar of Islam. He's not kafir, but you know, to, to actually just to, to abstain from praying, he is committing the act of kufr. And it is said that if he was to die, then the first thing he will be asked about is the salat. So don't let you know, don't let go of this important pillar of Islam. Very, very important. So what we do in this uh, ayah, we ask him, Oh Allah, help us towards worshipping you in the best way that pleases you. So one of the other habits that we have in this Surah Al-Fatiha is habit number eight. We should have good intention. We have, should have clear intention, niyyah, uh, for the ibadah at every task, for every task that we are doing. We should have peace of mind and true success can only be achieved by ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, to worship him, we need help. Yes, that's why the second part, we ask for his help. Without his help, we cannot even drink a sip of water. Without his help, we can't even quench our thirst. Then how can we worship him without his help? You know, something so simple, you know, getting a glass of water, we cannot do without his help. How can we worship him without his help? Therefore, recite this ayah with this feeling. That, oh Allah, we beg you for, for your help in this Salat and in doing every task after this Salat. Not just for Salat, we do every other task after Salat. And please help us whenever we are in trouble. Because nobody can help you apart from Allah subhanahu wa Always fall back to the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, people will hate you if you ask them for help continuously. Your, your mother, your father, they are very merciful towards you. But there comes a point where they say to you, that's it. Don't ask me anymore. You know, you're asking me for money every day. What do you think I am? You know, the bank manager? No. Go on, you know, ask someone else. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves it. He loves it when you come to, when you come to Him and He wants to accept the du'as that, that have been asked from Him. And the Prophet says in a hadith that du'a is the worship. That asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act of worship. Also, ask Allah for help in everything. How do you ask him? The way Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and other prophets asked. Their du'as are described in the Quran in the hadith. And the du'as will be taught in the second course. Now, practice, teach your partner very quickly. And we will share Allim. Do you have a partner? Could you have this brother, you could come, come to the front. Sit in the front. You're on your own there. Uh, translate for him in, in Urdu, mashallah. Very good. You okay? How are you? This is brother, mashallah. You okay with it? Yeah. Teri hi ibadat, teri hi ibadat, teri hi ibadat karte hai, aur teri hi si madad maangte hai. Tujhi si ya, female male you correct it. You okay, my Okay. There are some brothers and sisters who probably want to translate in Urdu. You are welcome to do that, inshallah. We have a course in Urdu which will be delivered in the future, inshallah. We're just waiting for the, uh, for, the, for the slides and for the books to come through. Maybe some of the sisters will do in the future and the brothers, inshallah. We'll finish off on this suggestion uh, that try to remember this Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi is 
the hadith, which the, 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 the words are directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but on the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says in the hadith of Qudsi, that Allah, he says, that I have divided the prayer, salah, between me and my slave. Half of it is for me, and half of it is for him or her. And I give him what he asks for. Yeah, so the, the hadith goes like this. When the slave, he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah responds to him and says that my slave has praised me. When he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says in response, Allah is responding to you in the Salat. So keep this in your mind. He says, Allah says, my slave has exalted me. Exalted me. I don't know if the, if the, uh, if the, if the, if the, if the spelling is right, but it means exalted me. When he says Malik Yomi, do you have any English teachers here? Spelling we is have? Is it wrong? Forgive me for that, inshallah. When he says Malik Yomi, then Allah says, My slave has glorified me. My slave has glorified me. When he says this with Iya Kana Budu wa Iya Kana Stain, then Allah says here, This is between me and my slave. And whatever he or she asks for, I will provide him. This is where the dua comes next, and we'll do the dua inshallah. When we say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina Alam Ta'alayhim, to the end, then Allah says, This is for my slave, and he or she will get what they have asked for. This actually is a beautiful hadith. You've probably heard this hadith many times in the Friday khutbah, in, in Durusis, etc. It is a beautiful hadith. Qudsi, try to remember it when you are reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Let's go to the next bit, which will be uh, slide 4a. And inshallah, we'll finish on time, bi'ithillahi wa ta'ala. Um, again, we're still in Surah Al-Fatiha. By the end of this lesson, as you mentioned earlier, you would have learned 44 new words, which occur in the Qur'an 15,000 times. As we mentioned before, there are 4,500 words in the Qur'an, which are repeated almost 78,000 times. And this is one of the examples which you gave in the beginning, how the Surah Al-Fatiha is repeated uh, 7,500 times in the Qur'an. We move on to the, the last, إِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ As I mean, this is really a dua uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, repeat. Ihdina, guide us, as sirat, to the path, al mustaqim, the straight. Ihdi is obviously is the first part. Na is the second part, and na is comes in the Quran. Ihdina comes in the Quran two times. Ihdina, and it means guide us. Yes, it is made of uh, a verb. And obviously we have the object which is us. So guide us. Hidayah is from the same root word, same root letters, ha, dal, and ya. Ha, dal, and ya. Hidayah, huda. Guidance. Quran is guidance for all. Hudan lil muttaqeen, the pious ones. Hudan lil nas, for the whole of mankind. So hudan, hidayah. as sirat Sa'ad, Ra, and Ta. as sirat means the path. The path. Don't forget the alif lam in the beginning. It is not part of the word. It is an, this, this, this to make the, the, the word as uh, sirat the path. And this is mentioned in the Quran forty five times. Forty five times. Al mustaqim. Al mustaqim is the straight, straight path, and it comes from the root letters qaf, waw, amim. And how many times is it repeated in the Quran? Thirty seven. So whenever you see this word, you will know the translation straight away. Mustaqim is straight. As I mentioned earlier, the alif lam in as-sirat is the. The. Alif lam is the. As-sirat al-mustaqim. The path, the straight, i.e. the straight path. The straight path. Some lessons from this uh, ayah. That what are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Obviously, we're asking him for hidayah. You know, for, for, for to guide us, for guidance to the straight path. Means, what does this mean? That, sh that it shows us, show us and guide us, Ya Allah, to the, to the right path in every aspect of our life. You know, when we become Muslim, that is the first step of the guidance. 
But also we need guidance to do what? To pray, to perform the Salat, after Salat, during the work, at home, in the office, wherever we are, we pray. Yeah, so the prayer should be number one. Uh, and when the shaitan uh, starts to whisper in our ear, what well, we say, we say, A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah, Min Shaitan, Bismillah, Rahman. So we should always continuously, the guidance is none but from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We know that. It's something which Allah tells us in the Quran, that no one guides but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What is our, where is our guidance from? From the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah, so there must be some rules and regulation that the one who created us has sent down with us. Because he hasn't just sent us down without any guidance. He has sent us the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet Wasallam. Therefore, we need to understand them in order to live by them. Can you just repeat the, the root words for Mustaqim? Yeah, let me go back. Sorry. So the root words for Mustaqim is Qaf Waw mean similar to Qawm or Qawama. Yeah. Write that down. Qaf Waw Amin. Take it. Mustaqim. The Qaf and the Waw and the Mim, this is the, where the, the, the word is derived from, which we will later, inshallah, we'll get to know how the words are made. So the verses of the Quran that are recited in the Salah are actually a dua for guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must try to understand them. If not, then we are, are we, you know, we need to ask ourselves, are we sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in asking for guidance? And every salat, every namaz, every prayer is a reminder that understanding the Quran is not only a necessity, but also an emergency. Yeah, so to remind, to, the first step we are, we are taking is, is learning the, the salat. So that's why we are here, inshallah. Allah will help us, inshallah, to get the guidance from the Quran as long as our intention are, is clear. And as long as we uh, see into the different signs in the universe, if we keep reviving our faith by being regular in the salat and other worship, studying Quran, hadith, and seerah, staying with a good company, and staying away from associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bid'ah and evil thoughts and deeds. The tenth, the tenth habit, we should ask for Allah's guidance for knowing, number one, knowing the guidance and then following the right path. Yes, so we could be Muslim, we could know it, but do we actually follow the right path? That is a question. So let's quickly uh, practice this and then we'll finish off with the last slide. Alim. <laughs> Okay, class. Shall we just finish off uh, with the last uh, ayah? And some scholars say this, these are two ayahs. Well, most say this is one ayah. Um, okay, so let's do this very, very quickly. The uh, practice Sirat. Sirat. The path. The path. Al -ladina Al -ladina of those. Of those. An -anta, An -anta. You have bestowed favors. You have bestowed favors. Alayhim. Alayhim. On them. On them. So, al -ladina, this is a common word in the Quran. al It is repeated how many times? Over a thousand times, yeah. Those who. al those who. 
and I'm the because Sirat we did earlier, so we're not going to repeat the Sirat here. That's why we have skipped straight to Al-Ladeen and Amta. So why you think, why has he missed Sirat? Because we did it earlier. In which part we did it in? The last one. Yeah. <laughs> so we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the path of those an Amta whom he has bestowed the favors upon them. And In'am, you probably heard the, the, the word In'am or favor. Uh, which is repeated five times. This, uh, this in'am is, is mentioned five times in the Quran. It comes from the root letters noon, ayn, mim. Noon, ayn, and mim. In'am, favor. Alayhim is also made of two uh, words, ala and him. Ala, it should be hum. But because there's ala before it, which you will learn later on, why it becomes him, it should be hum. But it's actually him here. Ala on him, them. Alayhim. Some messages from this ayah that you know, Allah has favored the, the prophets, the truthful people, the martyrs, the righteous people, and to let us know what was their path in order to recite this dua with, 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 with understanding. Let us take the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It consisted of mainly th these four tasks. So, what were the tasks which were given to the Prophet? Number one is actions actions of the heart, such as belief, iman, sincerity, ikhlas, love for Allah and His fear alone. And then, so these were the internal actions, so the external actions were the Salat, fasting, charity, zakat, hajj, good deeds, etc. Number two, he was also given the task to give da'wah, invite others towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was also given the task of purification of people's belief and actions, tazkiyah, purification of bad things and enforcement of good. The Quran is, is full of such examples. The fourth, Tasks which he was given, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, implementing Islam in families and society, amal bil ma'roof wa nahi al munkar, ordering the good and prohibiting the evil. So, what does this tell us? That if you want to be from amongst those who Allah has favored, what should we do? We must do these four things: believe, iman, do good things, give dawa, purification of self and friends from the wrongdoings, and installing and cultivating good habits, ordering good and prohibiting, prohibiting evil to the extent people. So don't be going around, you know, uh, flogging people and, you know, I said this is not your job, this is the job of the government or the, uh, of the uh, hukuma. Whatever you can do to order good and prohibit evil, you go to that extent. Don't go over your capacity and your capability. The eleventh habit is always we follow good models, read about them, yeah, good examples. Check your deeds, keeping in mind their example, and make a plan to try to be like them and implement it. Prophets, they ha all have good examples, but the best of example is in the Prophet ﷺ, in his seerah. Uh, the Quran gives us other examples of the obedience of Ibrahim salam, the patience of Ayyub salam, the, the, the sabr of Nuh, and Musa alayhi salam, how he went through difficult times with his people, and the repentance of Adam alayhi salam, our father, and Yunus alayhi salam. Read about these stories in the Quran, uh, always. We finish off with the last uh, ayah uh, before we before we end. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ So we're going to just quickly uh, wrap this up. So next week we can start on the surahs. Hey, repeat after me. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ not of those who earn your wrath. Not of those who earn your wrath. Alayhim. Alayhim. On them. Ghayr means not or other than. Not. And this is repeated how many times in the Quran? Ghayr mm. means not other than. Al maghboob. Those who have earned your wrath. And this comes from the root letters ghabab. 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 Yeah, maghboob. And this is come in the Quran once here, Ghayl Maghdoob. Maghdoob is similar to Maghloob, the one who is wrong or oppressed. Maghdoob is on the same pattern, the verb pattern. Alayhim, we did this earlier, it means on them, ala him. It should be ala hum, but it's, it joins to make it alayhim. The final bit, walad dalim, walad dalim. If you repeat after me, walad dalim. 
Okay, so here, very, very important, don't say wala zaldi. Yeah? There's no such thing as wala zaldi. Wala zaldi. Be very, very careful because it changes the meaning completely. None of those who go astray. Not of those who go astray. Not of those who go astray. So again, wala is made of two, two words. Wow and la. And no. And la is mentioned in the Quran how many times? Yeah, 1687. So it is repeated often in the Quran. And a dalin, it comes from the root letters ba la la. And it's repeated how many times? 14 times. Yeah, well, uh, those who <coughs> go straight. Dal and dalun, balin. So dal is the singular, dalun and balin is the plural. The one who goes straight, and you make it plural by adding either a waw and noon or ya and noon. Let's quickly do, do the message and then we'll finish. That the, 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 the guidance and the lala, uh, the first group who earned the uh, wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who know but do not act upon what they know and they earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just imagine their terrible end in this world and in the hereafter. You know, we ask Allah to save us from, from that. You know, that we know but yet we don't act upon it. And also, most of us want to live, you know, in a good life, like a hero or a leader. Uh, so we imitate others, and we wear clothes in their style, and also even walk in there, in like them. So who our who should be our hero? Who should be our example? Is obviously the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his wives, his companions, etc., and the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the second group who went went astray. So the first group was those whom the anger was upon them and those who went astray. Those who, do not, who don't know, who don't want to know, and they act without knowing the truth. So there's a difference in the two. They don't bother to, about the purpose of the creation and life. And they do not try and spend time to seek the true knowledge. So let us finally finish off. Let us be from amongst those. Uh, let us not be from amongst those uh, who are lost even after having the Quran with us. The first example, we should ask ourselves, are we away from the Quran only because of the, we do not know the Arabic language? We should ask Allah to give us tawfiq, to give us the ability to learn and understand the Quran. I mean, make a plan for it and invest time. Yeah, resolve, to, uh, you know, make a resolve today that we should not abandon the learning, uh, the, these lessons of the Quran. What is the Quran trying to say to us? We will always keep steadfast and be uh, amongst those uh, who are always seeking knowledge away from the bad models. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from following them. We finish off on this point, inshallah. When you go home, please try to uh, practice Sirat al ladina anamta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim, wa ladwaleen. Ameen. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa astaghfiruka, wa atubu lagi. Inshallah, we'll see you all at the same time uh, next week. If there are any